Okay guys, I want this to be one of the books I'm going to use as one of the references in my project and I want you to see why. It's got a lot of great information on the Greek and Roman gods as well as the origin with the Egyptian ones and check this out. Um, as you can see there are a lot of different con uh, contributors to this book and a lot of them have PhDs and a lot of them are archaeologists and you know I'm not saying these guys are 100% truthful or anything like that. I'm saying they're just contributing to a research book. Anyway, as you can see, there's about um, 15 different contributors. Okay guys, we're taking a look at some of the uh, source material for my speech to close out with here. Uh, this is just some of the pictures of the visual aids I have. Hey people, today we're going to be taking a look at the Illuminati. And uh, here's some stuff you can look forward to. Six examples. We got everything. Inverted crosses, Satan worship, celebrity, whatever. Split personality celebrities, everybody loves that. And of course, Dollarville conspiracies. Uh, what do we got? Oh, here are some speeches by George Bush. His, George Bush's father talking about the New World Order. You definitely want to check this one out, the Envisioning 1000 Points of Light. Hey guys, this is an excerpt from George H.W. Bush's speech that was Bush Sr. from the 90s. Uh, this is the speech called Envisioning 1000 Points of Light, a really Masonic speech. I just wanted to read a couple of excerpts. Uh, and here we go. What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order, where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind. Peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. That's it for this page. We have within our reach the promise of a renewed America. We can find meaning and reward by serving some purpose higher than ourselves, a shining purpose, the illumination of a thousand points of light. Here he's talking about Iraq and destabilizing. We do not seek the destruction of Iraq, its culture, or its people. What the hell is here? We will succeed in the Gulf, and when we do, the world community will have sent an enduring warning to any dictator or despot present or future who contemplates outlaw or aggression. The world can therefore seize this opportunity to fill the long-held promise of a new world order, where brutality will go unrewarded and aggression will meet collective resistance. Now this next one is an address before a joint session of Congress on the Persian Gulf Crisis and the federal budget deficit. Oh look, 9-11-1990, exactly, um, yeah, about 11 years before 9-11. So what has he got to say in here? Out of these troubled times, our fifth objective, a new world order, can emerge, a new era, freer from the threat of terror, stronger in the pursuit of justice, and more secure in the quest for peace. We do not exaggerate, nor do we exaggerate when we Saddam, say Saddam Hussein will fail. Vital economic interests are at risk as well. Iraq itself controls some 10% of the world's proven oil reserves. Iraq plus Kuwait controls twice that. 
and Iraq permitted to swallow Kuwait would have the economic and military power, as well as the arrogance, to intimidate and coerce its neighbors. Neighbors who control the lion's share of the world's remaining oil reserves. We cannot permit a resource so vital to be dominated by one so ruthless. And we won't. Yeah, you can't have that. You know, if you don't know who Gaddafi is, he gave away his gasoline for like 15 cents a gallon. So, you know, yeah, he's a really ruthless dictator. Let me also make clear that the United States has no quarrel with the Iraqi people. Our quarrel is with Iraq's dictator and with his aggression. Iraq will not be permitted to annex Kuwait. That's not a threat. That's not a boast. That's just the way it's going to be. If you don't know, um, at the time, Dick Cheney, I don't know what position he held at this time, but he was friends with Saddam Hussein, and um, he pretty much betrayed him. Um, in fact, Gaddafi even told you about that. Higher oil prices, slow our growth, and higher defense costs would only make our fiscal deficit problem worse. That deficit already is greater than it should have been. It projected $2 billion from the coming year. It must. It will be reduced. That's full of Masonic and esoteric references, as well as uh, references to the New World Order, as you can see right there. So, what else do we have? Here's the Time Magazine issue on secret societies, and it is, I think it is October 25th, 2013, that's the issue. Uh, if you want to know where to get this, I'll try and figure it out, uh, but my girlfriend got it for me, so. Here is another research paper I wrote, and it's mainly about astrology and all about how we're derived from the Roman Empire and how I think it never really died, how I think we just adopted all the Roman customs, and there's a lot of good stuff in here, but I don't think it's going to time the speech. Here's a National Geographic magazine on Greatest Empires, and this was from January 2014, if you want to check these out. Now, what really helped me with the speech was obviously the 9-11 Commission report. They lied about all the explosives, they denied witnesses like Barry Jennings, and, and, and it's just a cover-up book from start to finish, just to appease the masses. And, I, you know, I doubt very many um, non-family members of 9-11 even got this. So, I don't know, I guess it was a... And as you can see, this is the authorized edition, so... Like I said, I don't think this was a very popular book. Well, if it was, it was for the wrong reasons. Anyway, we got proofs of conspiracy. This is really essential. This is from John Arthur Robeson. This was published in like 1779. This is one of the first books, like published books, that said there was some kind of uh, collaboration and what do you call it, cahoots going on between the churches and the governments and you know the bankers. So I haven't finished it yet, but it's got a lot of really interesting stuff exposing the Jesuits. What we got here is Enochian Magic by Aleister Crowley. And I haven't even opened this yet because I really don't like these books. Just because, just in case it really does have a lot of, you know, secret knowledge on how to contact demons and things. I got enough of them without his help, so. Um, I'd highly recommend not meddling in these things unless you're doing it for research. And if you are researching it, you definitely want to pray because I keep this crap under my Bible. And no, I'm not joking. So I haven't even used this for the research. I just wanted to mention that to let you know that this stuff is dangerous and that he's talking about some really deep and really heavy things on how to contact demons. Like, definitely, he does talk about children's sacrifices. So. Next, we got some esoteric research. This is from Manly P. Hall, and this is The Riddle of the Rosicrucians. I haven't finished this yet either, but the Rosicrucians were really mysterious. That was the uh, secret society with Isaac Newton as well as Da Vinci. And they're supposedly the secret society that's, um, that's Christian mystics, and they believe Jesus was mortal, and he had, uh, he was married to, Mary Magdalene and he had a kid and his bloodline was a threat to the Vatican 
And you know, it does kind of make sense because the Vatican did go on a bunch of winch hunts and you know, you got the Crusades, but you know, Gnosticism is also very dangerous, so also ask for blessings if you're going to research heavily into Gnosticism. One of the key books is The Lost Keys of Freemasonry by Manly P. Hall. As I mentioned earlier, he was one of the forerunners of Masonic authors. The other is Albert Pike you want to get. We're going to get to his book next. But these really show right here. He combines the ancient Egyptian Freem or Freemasonry and he talks a lot about the mystery schools. And that's what I think Mystery Babylon is, are, is these ancient mystery schools from like Egypt and Greece and how our leaders participate in them to contact these fallen angels to get their technology and their information. <clears throat> Next, we got the Satanic Bible by Anton Saint and LeVay. I just don't know what to think about this. Like I said, he talks about Lucifer being the Roman God. And I haven't really read it. Like I said, I have no interest of reading this. I just verify what people say about it. And, you know, it is basically a do-what-thou-wilt type of lifestyle of worshipping thyself. So, you know, I'm not going to comment very further. Next, we got The Book of the Law by Aleister Crowley. Now, what this is, I've already done some... A presentation on this but this is basically where he tells you do what thou wilt and how to contact spirit beings and things like that so and as a matter of fact like I said George Bush in that speech I showed you the thousand points of light he says um, freedom from the rule of law so he makes references to this and anyway Aleister Crowley is really heavily influenced into the occult so and a lot of people are influenced by his teachings in politics, so it's crazy. Here we have the Four Books of Magic in Theory and Practice by Aleister Crowley. And again, there's a lot of heavy laden astro um, astrology symbols. Here we got, oh, chemistry. Anyway, what was I doing with this? Um, this is just more rituals on how to, you know, summon demons and things, so. I would not get these books for fun or to test the theory because just trust me on this, you don't want to. Anyway, last but not least is Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma, all 33 degrees. And this is the bread and butter. This guy pretty much tells you that they worship Lucifer and that their symbolism, they lie to the majority of their initiates of what the symbols really mean. And meanwhile, the really higher ups of these groups that have infiltrated Freemasonry and other secret societies, they participate in these ancient mystery schools to summon these fallen angels and get their knowledge. At least that's my theory, and I'm, I'm going to continue to present evidence on that. Anyway, this is some of the sources. I don't know if anybody's going to bother watching this part, but just in case you do, uh, if anyone needs any... I definitely get this book and some Manly P. Hall books. Some other ones that are crucial are from Helena P. Blavatsky called The Secret Doctrine. And um, there's also one by Manly P. Hall called The Secret Teachings of All Ages. Those are two I really want to get. But like I said, this book was like 60 bucks. This one was probably 30 something. 20 something so you know I've already invested a heavy amount of money into this esoteric library for you guys and it's it's really expensive if you want to get to the truth and a lot of them like I should have grabbed an example a lot of them are just a bunch of monkeys blibbering on about how they're white wizards and I think they watched you know too much World of Warcraft or whatever but Anyway, there's some heavy stuff out there, so I hope you enjoyed this, and definitely check out Manly P. Hall, Albert Pike, and Helena P. Blavatsky. Uh, there's another teaching, or book, from Helena P. Blavatsky. It's something about ISIS. ISIS Unveiled, maybe. Yeah, that's it. Alright, anyway, take care.